Anybody getting excited? I watched the Hallmark Marathon. I watched the Hallmark movie. What was the name of that movie today? It was the night before Christmas. See, Hallmark puts the little schedule out. Now, I'm, I'm a soap head. I know that. But Hallmark movies all end the same way. But it's okay because you feel good, right? So feel good as much as you can. So, so we were watching it, and, and I had to get in the shower to come here, unless, you, you know, I came in all gray-whiskered and ugly, so I had to, I mean, I'm speaking for Jesus today, so I got to look good. So I have to see the end of it when I go home, but Jenny already saw the end. So I might have to watch it by myself, but Nikki will watch it with me, won't she? Yes, because she loves me. Jenny loves me too, but not as much to wait on the movie for me. Yeah. Oh, we're just like Caleb and his mom, just 39 years into it, almost, 38, right? Yeah, 39 in May, yeah. It's a lifetime when you get that many in, buddy, but they are all good, amen? Well, uh, it, so much of the song and, and so much of the scripture in an Advent journey, lead us to one place, to Jesus. And, and that's the beauty. It, they, they lead us to the manger. That's the beauty and the excitement of knowing God's plans are so perfect that people all over the world are lighting candles. People all over the world are taking the same journey to prepare to receive a gift that has never been duplicated and, and came not for one, but for the whole world to receive. And it, and it goes to that simple concept of believing and having faith and finding joy in all circumstances. And, and most of all, having hope to know that everything that God has promised is real and is coming true. Our memory verses, do you remember our memory verses? We love one another because God loved us first. We are all sheep who have strayed away, but God's path is for us to follow Christ home. We celebrate the rich blessing of God in our life through song and fellowship, food and gathering. So do not be sad or dejected, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. And faith shows the reality of what we hope for and is evident in the things we cannot see. Love, peace, joy, and hope equal one thing, Jesus. The gift of baby Jesus. And, and what a blessing it has been this month to have the choir and the puppets and now the bell choir all leading us to Christmas Eve. I'm telling you. I'm so excited for Christmas Eve because it gets dark outside and the candles are lit and there's this huge crescendo of, of just everything being real. It, you know, I, I, I was going to have a children's time today, but you know, I, I want to go over the hope thing. What is hope? It is a feeling, if you look in Webster's Dictionary, a feeling of expectation and a desire for a certain thing to happen. A feeling of trust. Biblical hope is hope is the part of faith that looks to the future. It, it, it's forward-facing. And in that, there are three components. Goals, setting a direction in an oriented way. Pathways, finding the way. To achieve those goals. And the agency is believing and having faith in Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Goals, pathways, and agency are the, are the gifts that come to us in the birth of Christ Jesus. Christian hope, then, is believing in the promises of God through His divine Word. Through living one's life according to that Word. And then staying in the lane. You've, you've heard that thing, right? Stay in the lane. Um, 
We learned that, <coughs> excuse me, I get all choked up here. <coughs> and I didn't even have a peanut butter bar. We learned about, that was one of the, the special team lessons we had in football about staying in your lane. You know, when they kick that ball off, it goes to a certain person. And, you know, there's 11 of us out there that all want to tackle that person. But we have to stay in our lane. You know why? Because that person doesn't stand still. If he was just a tree at the end of this aisle, we could all converge on that tree. But that person is mobile. And the last thing he wants any of those 11 people to do is touch him because they want to run it back for a touchdown because everybody's happy, right? Um, He's hoping we don't stay in our lane. So the hard part is, is you're running down there, and if you're one of the outside, they call you a gunner um, people, that's your lane. So even though you see that other guy with the ball over here, you got to stay in your lane. Why? Because he might run over here. And if you come out of your lane to go chase him over there, and he zigs and you don't zag with him, what happens? Touchdown. And then, boy, you're on the film. Oh, number 80, you didn't stay in your lane. And 12's in the end zone. Staying in the lane is important in faith. Knowing God's Word, believing God's Word, allowing God's Word to be the vessel of our journey. Just like the Advent journey, finding faith, hope, Love and peace, all in the one thing, Jesus Christ. And that comes to us on Christmas Eve. But this morning, we're, we're going to focus in on hope. We're going to focus in on... In, now, what, what do you guys hope for at Christmas? Quinn, I'm going to call you by name. I mean, when I was 12, 13, I hoped for presents under the tree. Number one, Amen. And you kind of hope for that uh, Red Rider BB gun. Um, and, and there was this AMF set that I saw in um, J.C. Penney's Dream Book. Do you remember when the catalogs came out for Christmas? And you went and circled everything you wanted? You know, there was seven children in our house. But we still circled everything we wanted, amen? Because... Miracles happen at Christmas. And the one was this AMF roto-molded sled, and it had two handles on it to steer it. And, and I woke up on Christmas Day, and there it was. Neon green and black, chrome handles under the tree. And it was the greatest gift ever given. Amen? Well, at least I thought so. Till it got really, really cold. And you know what I found out about roto-molded plastic? If it gets below zero, it breaks. I'm going down the hill at 90 mile an hour. I'm cutting all these cheap plastic sleds in half as I run them over. And then I hit a frozen cow patty. Anybody know what that is? Ripped the bottom of that sled right out of me. It wasn't even New Year's Day and my brand new sled was broken. But and shattered, dejected, broken heart. This was the most expensive sled ever, at least in my mind at 12. This is the most wonderful gift, and I was the envy of the neighborhood. And that darn cow patty took my sled away. So, are you excited for Christmas? Are you excited for the gift that is coming in the, in, in the birth of a baby, Jesus Christ? Are you ready to receive that thing and hopefully be changed and transformed? Are you ready to receive your King? For salvation is near, and as the angels of the Lord said, do not be afraid, for I bring you great news. So, I set out then 
to find hope in God's word. I said, I really want to delve into hope. And I went to my favorite book, Deuteronomy. And if you want to know why that's my favorite book, because you can't say Deuteronomy three times fast. Be strong and be courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you, and he will never leave you or forsake you. That's a promise. Right? Psalm 39. But now the Lord, who do, but now Lord, who do I look for? For my hope is in you. That's the blessing of the promise. Jeremiah 29. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and to not harm you. Plans to give you hope and to give you a future. That's a promise from God. The blessing is found in John 10.10. 10. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that they might have life and have it to the fullest. That's the blessing in who? In Jesus, in baby Jesus. And then the final blessing I, I found, and I know it's not the final, but it's in 1 Peter 1. Praise be to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For in His great mercy... He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That's the ultimate blessing of Christmas. The giving of a baby for the salvation of the world. And all we have to do is what? Believe. Have faith. Hope. Love one another. Be excited as we were to find whatever is under the tree. And rejoice. Rejoice. Emmanuel. God is with us. So the sermon scripture tonight comes from the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah then, <coughs> chapter 9. And again, promises and blessings. Action, reaction. Nevertheless, that time of darkness and despair will not go on forever. The land of Zebulun and Naphtali will be humbled, and there will be a time in the future when Galilee of the Gentiles, which lies along the road that runs between the Jordan and the sea, will be filled with glory. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in the land of deep darkness, a light will shine. You will enlarge the nation of Israel, and its people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, like warriors dividing the plunder. For you will break the yoke of their slavery and lift the heavy burden from their shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod just as you did when you destroyed the armies of Midian. The boots of the warriors and the uniforms bloodstained by war will all be burned. For there will just be fuel for the fire. For a child is born to us. A son is given to us. And the government shall rest upon his shoulders and he will be called. Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. And Prince of Peace. His government and its peace shall never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all of eternity. And the passionate commitment of the Lord's, the Lord of heaven's armies will make this happen. I mean, that's only seven verses in the book of Isaiah, and it's the ninth chapter, but it wraps up the entire journey of Christian faith. Amen? There is a time of oppression, a time of pain, a time of suffering, but behold, the love of the Lord will free us from that. And that freedom comes in the birth of His one and only Son, baby Jesus. And this great light will shine upon the world and will extinguish darkness. The darkness being the sin that holds us captive. And that sin being freed will allow us to be new and alive and have hope. So therefore we must rejoice. 
We must rejoice and tell the world what God has done. For the yoke of our slavery will be lifted. The sin that, that hides us in doubt and fear and ugliness. For this child to be born and this son to be given to us is the true blessing of Christmas. And he shall be called. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. That is the blessing of Christmas. The truth in God's Word and the blessing in His Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? That's why we take that journey. And, and when that journey has bumps, <laughs> stay in your lane. Because there's one thing... Oh, Satan's good at it. Changing direction. Throwing curveball. Breaking our kneecaps. Making us, guiding us outside the lane. Amen? But Jesus is the way. He is the truth. And He is that light that guides us home. Amen? God is good. And all the time. The book of 1 John chapter 3, I want to close with this thought. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous, just as Christ is righteous. The one who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning of time. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. No one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in them. And they cannot go on sinning because they have been born again of God's love. <laughs> that simple little baby born in a manger has come to do all fulfill all of God's promises. Amen? And give us hope for the future. I want to end with that concept of hope because the video this morning is really, I wanted that to be our, 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 our departing message. I, I know you guys thought I forgot about it. You're done and show us a video today. Oh, it's at the end. Because I want us to take what we hear from that with us today when we go home. Scott, would you cue that up, please? So, I have this serious problem with Christmas presents. Don't worry, no soapbox is here. No, see, the problem is actually with me. I hint at the gifts, you know? I spill the beans and I ruin the surprise every year. But I can't help it. I love it so much. Mommy, I need you! I'm coming, sweetie! Spoiling the surprise kind of reminds me how God works. He likes to hint at big things. Like the way he hinted about that very first Christmas gift. All those years ago, the Lord himself shall give you a sign, and the virgin shall conceive and give birth to a son, and he shall be called, do you remember? Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Yeah, he was preparing a gift, all right. God packed up the greatest gift that the world had ever seen. Not even he could keep it to himself. He gets me. And God didn't just let the surprise slip once. No, he let the cat out of the bag nearly 300 times in the Old Testament. We call them prophecies. But here's the big difference between God's prophecies and just <laughs> spoiling a surprise. One is giving the gift early, but you don't get to open it. And the other is God giving us a gift of hope while we wait for Jesus to come. Do you see it? He wasn't telling us a secret. He was making us a promise. Because we humans, three chapters into the creation story, we managed to mess it all up. Yeah, we needed saving. Desperately. So, God kept sending us hope 
through his prophets and messengers. And that hope was the gift of his son, the Messiah. And there will never be a greater gift than Jesus. And the cool thing is that hope isn't over. He promises to come again and take us all home. So the gift is just right there. The question is, will you accept it? Our Advent journey has been about discovery. The journey to discover the love, the peace, the joy, and the hope that lead us to one thing, Jesus. May this week we shine like no other star in the sky. May we love like God first loved us. May we exude the happiness that we find when we open that present as we did as children. And may we have the peace to know that all of this is from God who loves us like no other. Go in His peace. Share His hope. Exude His joy. And love like He has first loved us. God is good. And all the time, Amen.